Hi, this is Jim Bach, Technical Advisor for IHS Kingdom, bringing you another Kingdom Did You Know? A series where we provide you with information related to functionality and workflows within Kingdom that you may not have been aware of. If I were to share this image with a room full of geologists, most of them would correctly identify it as being taken from the Permian Basin. If you wanted to be more precise, it's actually the top of the, uh, of the Wolf Camp formation. But if you were to ask that same room full of geologists to plan it well based off of what you see here, most of them are just going to laugh at you. All right, how about now? Certainly an improvement, you can now see where all the, the county boundaries are located, as well as that state boundary between Texas and New Mexico. So you have a much greater sense of where things are located with respect to that Wolf Camp. But again, there's still not enough information to plan it well. All right. We have an improvement. You can actually now see where a lot of the roads are located, but again, there's still not enough information here. What about all the other wells? You certainly want to know where they were located before you're plan an additional well, and the scaling that we have here is totally inappropriate. So the point that we're trying to make here is that planning a well is going to require a lot of different data types along with a set of specialized tools that are going to allow you to accurately place that well where you need it to be located. We're going to look at a workflow today an integrated workflow for that matter, using tools in both Spatial Explorer and Kingdom that's going to allow us to plan a well inside of the Wolf Camp B formation. So at this point, let's jump into that workflow. For today's workflow, we're going to get started initially in Spatial Explorer. And there are a number of reasons why you may want to use Spatial Explorer to, to plan your wells. I think the most obvious is just this ability to view multiple data types simultaneously in one coherent view. So as you can see right now, we're viewing the Wolf Camp structure map, we're viewing our county lines, as well as a streaming map service all at the exact same time. And you can turn individual layers on and off. So there we're turning off our streaming map service on and off with a single mouse button click. You can do the same thing with your structure maps as well. Um, at this point, let's actually focus in primarily in Midland County and show you some additional tools that are going to be available to you. So we're going to zoom in first into Midland County. And once we zoom into there, we're going to turn on some additional layers that you're going to want to have. You're probably going to be able to view your wells as well as the deviation surveys associated with that. And while we're at it, let's bring in our, our section lines because oftentimes those are very helpful in terms of planning your wells. At this point here, we've identified an area where we want to add an additional well to a well pad and let's zoom into that area. So we're going to turn on our rectangular zoom and we're just going to zoom into that specific area right here. And so right here we have two wells and you can kind of see them on the pad. If we change that transparency setting, again this is another great feature of Spatial Explorer, is you can adjust the transparency of individual layers so you can kind of peer through one layer into a second. But as you can see these first two wells, they are coming off of that same singular pad. We're going to want to add a third well that where the deviation survey runs roughly where my cursor is going right now. So to do that, let's use some additional tools. One of the tools you may want to do is you may want to space or, or calculate what that spacing is from the first well to the second well so you can preserve that spacing on your third well. To do that, one of the tools you may want to employ is this editable polygon layer. We're going to create a new layer and let's just call this one well spacing because that's exactly what we're working on right now. Add that layer and then make that layer active and you'll see you have a series of tools that become available to you. The tool that we're going to want to focus on right now is the insert polygon tool. And you're going to want to generate a polygon based off of key points from those first two wells. So your total depth points as well as what we're going to assume to be those landing positions. So we're going to define our polygon based off of those four points. And double click on that last point and it creates that polygon for you. Once you've created that polygon, you'll notice you have some additional tools available to you. One of those is going to allow you to move that polygon. So we're going to move our polygon off to the side. So now we're going to be able to add our third well using this polygon and preserving that space right there. Now this is an integrated workflow and we are going to want to do some of the planning inside of Kingdom. So before we go any further let's kind of 
take this polygon and bring it into Kingdom. Again, with that well layer active, you're going to want to select your polygon layer. So just highlight that polygon layer. And you'll notice one of the options that's going to be available to you is the ability to save that to Kingdom. Select Save. And again, you're going to want to write the name. And we're just going to use the same name that we did in Spatial. Select Done. And then when you close this box, it's actually going to take you directly into Kingdom. And you can see that polygon was added automatically for you inside of Kingdom. If you want to change the look and feel of that in Kingdom, easy enough. Just go over to your Project Explorer, find polygons, that specified polygon, go to your Properties tab. You can change the line color. You can change the line style. You can even get rid of that fill pattern. Maybe you don't want to have a fill pattern at all. Turn that to blank. Select OK. And all those changes are going to be recorded for you. Now, we still have some more work to do in Spatial Explorer before we come into Kingdom. So let's jump back into Spatial. And at this point, we're actually ready to start positioning our surface and bottom hole locations. Now, to do that, we're going to want to change the active layer to the visible well layer. Once that layer is active, um, one of the items you might want to do is you might want to create a section grid that's going to help you space that well. Creating a section grid is really easy. One of the things we're going to do is just create a manual section and we're going to digitize four corners of our current section boundary. And once we got that fourth corner kind of drawn in there, double click. And now we see we have a nice quarter section drawn in here. And let's plan a well at this point. So I create well. And we're going to sh first show you how to do it by descriptive location. And then we're going to do it uh, just by drawing it based off of the features we see on the map. But from the descriptive location, you'll notice you can plan both your surface and bottom hole locations. You can do it from footages, you can do it from a spot location, and you can also do it from a more descriptive spot location from the quarter call. But we're going to do spot location from footages, and I'm just going to put in some values that I've already calculated previously. 300 feet from the north line and 2,500 feet from the east line. And then for the bottom hole, we're going to go 100 feet, not from the north line, but from the south line and then east west let's go 1800 feet from the east line and what's great about this is you can select preview and if you're happy with those positions you can select OK or you can just go through and make additional changes and continue to hit preview until you've got it located exactly the way um, that you want that well to be positioned but what I want to do is I want to show you a, a second way of adding that well so we're just going to hit cancel instead of OK and another option that you're going to have available to you is you can just create your well by pressing and holding um, on your base map. So right now, you'll notice we have a little S. So we're going to kind of place our surface location a little bit off to the side of one of those wells on the pad. So now we have our surface location positioned. And we're going to base the bottom hole location again off of that polygon. We're going to place it in this corner of the polygon to represent the bottom hole location. And then once you've done that, it's going to ask you to give a name for your well. So let's just label our well. You might want to give it a number. And then on the next tab, this is important, you're going to want to put in your, your KB, DF, and GL elevations. You're probably going to want to work that beforehand and just have a general idea. And it's going to be based off of you know what, um, what basin you're working inside of what those depths are going to be. But you just want to enter those values in, you know, real quickly. And then give it also a total depth. And I'm just going to add 16,000 feet. That's what our estimated total depth is going to be. And select Create Well. And after you hit the Create Well tab, give that a second, you'll notice that your surface and bottom hole locations, they will will have changed so you no longer get that S and B but you will likely still get that bottom hole symbol for the well. What that tells you is that that well has been created and now if you go into Kingdom we can continue to plan that well and add some additional definition because again 
in Spatial Explorer, you're just being be able to do your surface and bottom hole location. So if you want to adjust where your landing location is, you're going to, want to continue this workflow in Kingdom. So let's jump into Kingdom now. And as you can see, our well has been placed appropriately inside of Kingdom. Now, at this point, we may want to add some additional definition to our well outside of just our surface location and our bottom hole location. To do that, you're going to want to first highlight your well, right mouse button click, and select the Well Path Planner. That's going to open up a whole new set of tools. And you'll notice that it brought up the exact same well that we saved previously in Spatial, the Wentz 11 well. But at this point, what we want to do is we want to digitize some additional points because we also want to define what our landing position is going to be. You'll notice you do have a measurement tool that goes along with this. Let's set the measurement tool to 500 feet. And if you select digitize, you'll notice that the D, which allows you to digitize points, it's going to have a radius equal to that 500 feet. If you want to change that radius, hold the space bar down and again, use your, your uh, wheel mouse and you can adjust that by moving your wheel mouse around. Let's go to 530 feet. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add two points. Um, the second point being what your landing location is going to be. So after that second point, let's finish planning our well by placing the total depth point again along that polygon. Double click. And so now we see we actually have four different points representing our well at this point. Now, you'll notice that the second point by default always assumes that's the landing location. Well, we actually want our landing location to be the third point. So you're going to want to make sure that you you make sure that you highlight that position properly. So we're going to change that from a digitized target to a landing target. And so now we're actually ready to start planning things with respect to depth. One of the tools we we added in here which makes it real easy for you is to actually calculate those depth values from a grid. Now you may recall we are planning our well inside the Wolf Camp B formation so let's find a grid that represents the Wolf Camp B. So we found that grid and you'll notice I can place an offset in here so you can go above or below if you want it to be shallower you would put a negative offset if you wanted it to be deeper you would put a positive offset but we actually want it to go right along with that Wolf Camp B formation and then our interval let's make that 1,000 feet instead of 100. And once you've add, added these values associated with it, this, these selections right here, if you select Compute, it will compute the depths along that deviated portion of the well from the landing position to your, your, your TD point right there. Now, you may want to do some additional planning inside of a 3D perspective. Before you do that, however, you are going to want to turn on the section display. And the reason for that is it's going to highlight what that section display looks like inside of UPAC, making it easier for you to manipulate some of those points inside of UPAC. But anyhow, we've turned that section display on. Let's go into UPAC. So let's open up UPAC. And let's minimize this so we can see things a little, better, a little bit better. So this is what we were talking about. So that gray outline, that's that section display. Without that on, it's going to be very difficult for you to make additional adjustments to your well. And as you can see, just like you would have expected, it from the uh, landing position to the total depth point, the well does equal now that Wolf Camp B formation. But let's just adjust one additional point and show you how easy that is to do. So changing our hand to a pointer, we're just going to drag this position down a little bit further along that planned well. And if you move to the side, you can see that it actually recalculates that well path plan for you every time you make an adjustment. And once you're happy with that finalized well plan, then you can make some, then you can actually save that well path plan inside of the well path planner using that, that particular cursor. It may take a few seconds for it to save. And then once that saves, then you can also save your deviation survey as well. And you'll notice that once that deviation survey saves, the color of your plan with that deviation survey saved is going to change. It's going to go from that uh, yellow to a white plan. So if you hit OK, you notice now we actually have our planned well is, is drawn in white. 
And at this point, you can take that well path plan and you can share it with your drilling team, and then they can execute on that plan. Obviously, they can make changes on that as seen necessary. So there you have it. We have this fully integrated workflow that's going to allow you to plan a well from both a plan view perspective in both Spatial Explorer and over in Kingdom. And then you can actually take that and also continue planning that inside of ViewPack with a 3D perspective. Thank you so much for viewing this episode of Kingdom Did You Know? If you have any questions re related to this particular workflow or just Kingdom in general, please feel free in contacting either myself or support desk with the information provided below. Thank you.